Okay. After last night, how long did you think you'd have to wait for the inevitable video of women standing on the steps of the Ohio Republican Party's headquarters dressed up like binders? Yep. <laughs> there it is. You knew it was coming, and there you go. <laughs> Very exciting. More hit. <laughs> After last night's debate, after what was, I think, a pretty clear win for President Obama, what seems to worry the Romney campaign the most is the meme that sprung from Mr. Romney's weird reference to binders full of women. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us a whole binders full of, uh, of women. And so as the Obama campaign launched a website at bindersfullofwomen.com and a million tumblers were born and texts from Hillary LOL'd at the very idea that Mitt Romney was still using binders and there was the Facebook page and there was the video game that I'm not really sure how you win but it works kind of like the Atari game Kaboom and then there was the Twitter feed for Mr. Romney's binders of course as all that was happening last night and today. The Romney campaign fired up their patented meme doubling machine. They tried to make it seem like President Obama was the one with a big, embarrassing binder problem. The Republican Party put out this picture of a binder, an empty binder, and said, this is President Obama's binder, his binder of policies. See how it's empty? See, Obama's the one with a hilarious binder. Did you hear a binder thing from the debate? It was a thing about Obama. This is insane, right? But this is what they do. This is their trick, the meme doubling. War on women? It's your war on women. The overall problem here is that Mr. Romney brought up the binder story as a way of avoiding answering a very direct question on policy, which was, does he support fair pay for women? His running mate, after all, voted against the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. And the campaign's first response to a question about that policy, when asked by the Huffington Post Sam Stein, well, the, the, res the response from the campaign was memorably noncommittal. Does uh, Governor Romney support the Lilly Ledbetter Act? And we'll get back to you on that. So that was six months ago. Last night, this was still an unanswered question. Would Mitt Romney support Fair Pay Act for women? We know his running mate was against it. Is he for it? Now, Mr. Romney gave no answer about the policy at the debate. That's when he instead wandered off into the now infamous binders anecdote. His campaign followed up last night. Senior Romney advisor Ed Gillespie said, quote, Mitt Romney was opposed to the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act at the time. But then today, about 12 hours later, the campaign sent out another change in the form of a correction from Mr. Gillespie saying, no, 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 I was wrong. When I said last night, Governor Romney opposed the Lilly Ledbetter Act, he never weighed in on it. So, so, so the problem for Mr. Romney last night is that it was for the purpose of avoiding a question or a direct statement about that policy that Mr. Romney wandered into his crazy anecdote about binders full of women. He thought apparently that was safer territory than actually addressing the policy. That was the problem last night. The problem for him today is that even the awkwardly distracting anecdote about binders turns out to be poison for him. That's next. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. Which was very uncomfortable. Joining us now for the interview is Shannon O'Brien. She ran against Mitt Romney in the 2002 Massachusetts governor's race. That was a race, of course, which Mr. Romney won. Shannon O'Brien, thank you for joining us tonight. It's nice to have you back. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, that O2 campaign is at the heart of today's uh, debunking, if you will, of the binders thing. Can you explain to us what was going on in 2002 at that time that Governor Romney was talking about last night? Well, it was fascinating for me to listen to that story. I, I call it an, uh, another one of Mitt's Massachusetts myths, and he's made himself the shining knight. Uh, the fact is there was a group, Mass Gap, which is the government appointments project, put together by a number of bipartisan women's groups. Uh, at the time, there were approximately, I don't know, 30 percent of women in high-ranking positions in that administration. And this group got together and demanded, frankly, of me and of Mitt Romney uh, that we make a pledge, that we pledge to bring more women into, whether it was my or his administration. So we actually signed, I think he did too, signed the pledge. So when he goes and says that he was out finding all these women, the fact is the women beat on our doors and said, Take these binders. So at least the binders, I think, was, was truthful. But the, but the binders, so you're saying, just so I can get this right, 
It's not that Mitt Romney realized that all of his cabinet uh, not potential appointees, as he mentioned last night, were, were, were too male in terms of the, the pool. And he needed he sent people back to go find binders full of women in order to uh, change the gender makeup of the people he was considering for his cabinet. You're saying that you guys were both offered these binders before you were ever in a position of appointing anybody? I I'm saying I'm sure that the thing that was delivered to him may well have been in a Staples binder. But the fact is, these groups had had discussions with both candidates well before he got sworn in in January. And so these people were putting together resumes and women who had the right credentials to serve in some of these high-ranking positions. So the real absurdity is that he said he looked around and that he personally went out and met with groups to go and find these women as if this was some affirmative good act on his part uh, for him of him standing up for women it just uh, really is not that truthful so people were standing up for women it just wasn't him who was initiating it it was the case. bipartisan women's groups who were standing up for women and the good news is he actually did appoint women to his administration so he can get a little bit of credit for that sure well, well did he did he put in place any actual policies uh, in, in terms of benefiting working women and affirmative action for women the kinds of things that were being discussed last night well, not so much. I mean, I'm not really aware of any policies. You know, when he first came into office, he did indeed have uh, something like 40, 42 percent uh, of the people in, in some of the higher ranking um, positions in his administration. Uh, but by the time we got to the end of his uh, gubernatorial term, he had lost interest in governing Massachusetts. He was already off running for president, or at least uh, staking that out. And so uh, the number said uh, shot back down to 25 percent, frankly, lower than what the previous administration had. So he lost interest, and I guess maybe the women in his administration lost interest, too, because they left. So he did have a high initial number of female appointees, but they fled when his administration sort of pooped out toward the end. Well, again, he, it was 30 percent before he got there, 42 percent when he launched, and by the time he left, it was, uh, I think, something about 25 percent women. Shannon O'Brien, who ran against Mitt Romney in the O2 Massachusetts governor's race and who now has a national role telling us what it was like uh, in Massachusetts at that time. Thank you for helping us understand this tonight. I really appreciate Thanks. it.